Hello everyone, this is 3D Printing News Unpeeled, live with your SPLs. Um, so, uh, welcome, and uh, yeah, we hope you're going to enjoy this episode, uh, if it's your first time. This is uh, a daily news, or well, workday daily news roundup of all the most relevant news in 3D printing. And uh, we hope to bring you the uh, biggest, most impactful stories, and also, you know, we're going to include some stories that maybe you've overlooked and, 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 and deserve merit a little bit more of attention, more attention of your attention. Um, we get so many stories from 3dprint.com uh, and also from, from lots of other news sources across the web. And uh, we today have four uh, stories for you. Uh, and uh, we rank them in order from least or most impactful, it, a bit playfully perhaps. And uh, so on number four, this is a story from 3dprint.com, and it's about VRC metal systems uh, being able to participate in the U.S. Navy's Reptex. Reptex is something organized by NAVC, and it's like a kind of like new technology aboard ships type of exercise. It's a big opportunity for a vendor in the, uh, with the Navy to either make a complete fool out of yourself or to uh, really perform well in front of a, kind of a live studio audience, if you will. Um, so what does VRC do? It's a North Dakota-based uh, cold spray manufacturer. Uh, it's actually quite big in the, the cold spray uh, as a technology. Cold spray, by the way, is powder that is blown supersonic speeds at an object, and then it impacts an object, the powder, and then uh, through plastic deformation just sticks to the surface. Cold spray is a, a really very, very inexpensive uh, 3D printing technology. Uh, and a really, really very high just deposition rate. You can't do all these intricate structures like you can do and all these part properties that you can do in powder bed fusion. Um, but it does allow you to kind of clad and, and kind of like put new layers on things and re repair and rejuvenate things. And uh, a relatively compact system can do quite large surfaces as well comparatively. Um, so it's, you know, one could see why this is a very interesting technology for the Navy is trying to repair things all the time, essentially. Uh, VRC also has very compact, quite small systems, one of uh, which is, is to be used on the Navy ships. Uh, and the other one, they have a camp system. And camp is like a containerized kind of larger cold spray installation that you only need to plug water into and then it works. Um, so that's a, it's a very exciting development. Uh, I remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, the USS Essex saw the the, um, the Xerox uh, technology being tested aboard a U.S. Navy ship. So the Navy's really, you know, as part of its sustainment efforts, is really looking very heavily at 3D printing. It's, of course, a dream for them to be able to repair things underway and also improvise certain improvised uh, repairs if something goes terribly wrong or if they need to improve something. Um Cold spray would be, you know, they can't just rely on one technology. So obviously they're testing a bunch of them. And cold spray would be very interesting for large surfaces and rejuvenation and maybe hard wearing surfaces as well. Um, having said that, it's a powder based technology and I would never really like to have a powder based technology on board a ship uh, because of the, the ability of just any powder uh, to explode and then just the added risk of some of these powders as well. So I'm not sure about that, but totally understand why the Navy is interested in this. Um, the next news item is Prototech by the Prototype Solutions Group. Prototype Solutions Group is a 17-year-old company based in Wisconsin. Um, and Prototech is a you know, very acquisitive, acquisitive company that's on the warpath that already bought uh, Midwest Prototyping. You know, it's a, traditionally a CNC outfit that really has expanded uh, significantly in the United States of America into the additive space. Um, now, Prototech itself has 11 facilities, 300 employees, and over 250,000 square feet of manufacturing space. Now, this is notable because it's a big consolidation effort going on, uh, 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 on the way uh, uh, currently in 3D printing. Um, we're seeing, on the one hand, Prototech. Another player in the same realm uh, is Core Industrial Partners that through its Fathom uh, uh, affiliate is, is, is doing a similar type of thing. They're doing an asset heavy approach and trying to take all these regional players and form it into one, uh, you know, US wide giant that can have the scale and scope to, to, to really deal. Well, first to, to, to have a really good order flow kind of deal flow kind of going through a big pipeline of orders to, to fill all these machines, which of course makes everything a lot cheaper and also to concentrate operations to make operations more efficient and then to apply automation and software to these operations to make them even more efficient than you would be if you would just have one metal machine. 
Also, specifically in metal 3D printing, it's very difficult to make money for just having one machine. It's, it's actually impossible, at least I've done some calculations, and based on that, it's, it's near impossible to make money off of one machine unless you're in like, you know, really well-trusted niche and you're able to command a very, very big premium. And also that has to still uh, allow for high, quite high machine utilization still. So, you know, uh, you know, so so consolidation and offering more things, offering both scale and scope increases seems like a really logical thing to do. So these are the asset heavy players that are trying to acquire the expertise and the people and the machines. Then we also have companies like Zometry that are really trying to 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 be the platform and then to have other people do it uh, uh, for them. So you know that, that's a very different kind of thing. Um, you know, this is a movement uh, that's, that's ongoing. It's something that's really going to impact our market, especially in the United States of America, where service bureaus tend to be quite regional, quite small. Um, the next news is, oh, we got that news story. The first two news stories came to us from 3dprint.com, by the way. The next one we got off of PR Newswire. And that's Lincoln Electric to work with General Atomics on layup tooling. Now, this, is, I, I, this actually surprised me, actually. Uh, so first off, General Atomics is a well. It's actually a very peculiar company because it makes nuclear fuel uh, fission uh, uh, tooling and machines for nuclear fission, and it also makes uh, Predator and other uh, large UAS drones, uh, and including weaponized drones. It's kind of a you know kind of a company full of brainiacs to solve the impossibles to solve things that are really trusted by the U.S. government. Essentially, that's what General Atomics is. Um, and uh, there's other ones, SSRI and other companies that do it that have a similar type of role. But General Atomics, especially through this drone thing, a lot of things they've done uh, have really grown to be a very formidable company, especially in the defense uh, business in the U.S. Um, so, you know, that's a very prestigious company. Working with Lincoln Electric is a very, very prestigious uh, welding company as well. It's very, very uh, uh, established in welding. Uh, one of his subsidiaries, actually two of his subsidiaries, Baker Industries and Lincoln Electric Additive Solutions, are going to work together with General uh, Atomics. Uh, now, what they're going to try and do is do an R&D project to use WAM for layup tooling. I did not think of this. I had never, I would have never thought of this. I mean, I knew that WAM was, was really inexpensive, but I really expected that, that for layup tooling, that the kind of tooling that you would use to make composites on top of, which traditionally has been done in like big wood molds or cores, or uh, other type, type tooling, I would have naturally expected that really large machines like the Thermwood machines or Cincinnati or Ingersoll, those type of machines would, would really uh, do this kind of aerospace tooling. I really thought that the polymer large scale printing would be the, the, the cheap way to go here. But what uh, General Atomics is trying to do is trying to use like WAM, so wire arc additive manufacturing. So it's kind of like a welding robot on, uh, essentially it's a welding robot, uh, um, to, to make these larger scale tools. Um, and I, again, I would, that's really surprised me. I think I had to read this a couple of times. And I was like, what, what? Um, and, uh, so they're using it specifically for the, the composite lamination for the young unmanned aerial systems. Uh, and so far they've had a 30 to 40% reduction in cost and 20 to 30% reduction in lead time on WAM layup tooling, uh, as opposed to manu uh, traditional manufacturing tooling. So that's, uh, Kind of a shot across the bow of anybody making that traditional layup tooling that uh, they need to get their act together because this is really coming for them. Um, also, you know, if we look at like what General Atomics does, they could really use this across a lot of their business units and a lot of different uh, things as well. So that could uh, have some follow on effects. Um, and again, this is like something completely new to me. I, I, I had not considered this. I don't know if you had, but wire arc is, is a technology that, that to me, is good at making large scale things, but they're not very detailed. There's a lot of uh, unevenness and there's not a lot of dimensional accuracy on these things uh, compared to a lot of other things. So I would have thought that it requires a lot of finishing in a lot of cases won't be possible. So so this actually surprised me. And, and um, yeah, it's, a, it's a new application, metal uh, composite tooling, metal tooling for composites that's 3D printed using WAM. Or to me, it's new. And maybe other people have heard of it before, but I hadn't. Um, now, the number one bit of news today, and this, this also surprised me, actually. This comes to us from EE Journal, and it's Innovation Lab and ISRA have a breakthrough additive manufacturing of printed circuit boards. Uh, so as a part of the Horizon 2020 funding, um, Innovation Lab has uh, 3D printed copper solderable circuits. Now, what they claim so far is the biggest advantages is it doesn't use these toxic etchants, right? And the substrates themselves are 15 uh, times, times, right, thinner than the alternatives. 
And Dr. Janusz Szynka, who's the head of printed electronics at Innovation Lab, said, this is a state-of-the-art production process which will decrease the cost and reduce logistical dependencies on suppliers while delivering three key benefits for the environment, consuming fewer materials, using less energy, and producing less waste. By the end of this year, we expect to have scaled the process to high volumes, meeting customer demands for of a million solderable tracks or more. So first off, like, you know, for a lot of people, PCBs or 3D printing PCBs is either be something that you would only use in a really small scale, like in your own lab, right, for kind of like prototyping and then cutting edge stuff, or it's been something kind of pie in the sky, far off stuff. So this prices this much, much closer and much, much closer to the to, to production. Also, what we know, uh, you know, there are some uh, 3D printing applications on electronics and stuff, and they, they've gotten very big very, very quickly. And so if we're, we're talking about the teeth and the hearing aids and all this, there, there's, there are millions or tens of millions of parts. So already, if you are successful in electronics or something that's cost-effective, you can go to millions of parts very quickly and could, could become like a very large um, uh, consumer and user of 3D printing very fast. So, you know, the electronics industry especially is getting a lot of attention from 3D printing for heat sinks and stuff like this. But I think in connectors, um, uh, IC tooling, and, and many other applications, there, there, there's a lot of overlap there and that, that, that could really see uh, some some a lot of attention and and this could have a lot of impact uh you know on pcbs but also on sensors iot if that ever happens and and, and electronics more broadly so that was our news for today i'm going to put the the links uh in the the, the article on the bottom so that you can uh, enjoy them and go visit those companies and uh and yeah that's it really i'll put the links right there and then uh and thank you for joining us today uh, thank you for being here with me. And uh, yeah, again, let us know if, uh, if there's anything we can improve or anything we should do differently. This is very much your news source. So, so tell us what we can do better. Thank you.